Hey guys, welcome to part four of my eyeshadow palette declutter. So I know it's been a couple of months since part three, but I'm ready to get back into it. I'm just tired of seeing this mess with all these palettes on top here that don't fit. So in parts one and two, I tackled another section of the room and thinned out some of the palettes over there. And in part three, I started working on these bins right here and I got down to about here, I think, which is the drawer with Huda Beauty. So I'm gonna finish the bottom two drawers and hopefully do as much as I can over here. I think these are all my drugstore palettes. So uh, let's go ahead and just jump right in and get started. All right, so drawer number one is my Urban Decay and Persona drawer. So I have a feeling I'm gonna get rid of a lot of things here because I'm not as big into Urban Decay as I used to be. I do love Persona though, so I'm probably gonna be keeping these, but I think I'll probably hang on to mostly the Naked palettes from Urban Decay because those are classics and I sometimes refer back to them. So I'll probably hang on to those, but um, let's start with Naked Greens because, I'm sorry, why did I call it Naked Greens? wild greens and this palette I was so excited for but I just did not like the formula at all it just like it wouldn't pick up some of these shades got hard pan really quickly there was a lot of toppers in here which I'm not really a fan of so this one was a pretty big disappointment even though I love the colors so I think I'm going to go ahead and declutter this one right away also the on the run palettes these were so beautiful when I first got these I was really into them but now I don't know I haven't touched these in so long um, this was the detour one it had warm tones and then it had some blues this one was a really pretty duochrome shade as well but yeah I just never touch these so it doesn't really make sense for me to keep them so there was that one there was highway queen which was more of like an orange and peachy color story this one was shortcut this one I really liked a lot it had kind of like mauvey tones and I definitely did use these a lot when I first got them. This was G Train, um, but these are so old at this point too. And I find that eyeshadows, particularly Urban Decays, they don't work as well as the years go by. Like there's just something, I don't know if they dry out or what it is, but yeah, I just don't really think I should hang on to these anymore. This is a new palette that they actually just sent me in PR. This is the Naked Sin palette. I'll probably keep it because it's a really neutral, really wearable palette, and I just got it recently. I thought it was pretty. It's very easy to wear. I love some of these colors in here just for like everyday looks, like really subtle everyday looks. So I'm going to hang on to this one for now. The Petite Heat palette, I honestly haven't touched in forever. This one is an all matte palette, and I'm also not really a fan of those. I usually like a shimmer shade on my lids, so I'm probably going to declutter this one. Next up are the Naked palettes, and like I mentioned, I am going to keep these partly for nostalgia partly because I do refer to them sometimes so we have the original Naked palette this one's no longer available then we have Naked 2 this is actually the first one that I bought and I just love all the cool tones in this one and then Naked 3 had rosier colors I really liked this one as well. Naked Cherry wasn't my favorite of all the Naked palettes. I don't normally like wearing pinks on my eyes, but I haven't played with this in a while, so I might revisit this and see what looks I can come up with. Naked Honey is one of my favorites. I really do enjoy this color story a lot. It's warm toned, but also it has kind of the greenish colors. Next up, we have Naked Wild West. I rarely ever reach for this one. It's just okay, but there's something about this combination of colors that really doesn't inspire me that much, so. I'm gonna hang on to it, but it's really not my favorite. Oh, I see this one peeking out from the back. This one is Bailout. It's another one of the On The Run palettes. And this one had all neutrals and then pops of purple down here. This was another duochrome shade. Um, so again, really pretty, but these are just feeling like very scratchy and dried out. So I'm going to get rid of this one. The Born to Run palette. This was one of my all-time favorite Urban Decay palettes. I don't believe they make it anymore, but it just has a really nice color story. And this is one that I actually do still use for duping purposes. So I'll probably hang on to this one for now. We also have the Urban Decay Gwen Stefani palette. I've just hung on to this for nostalgia. I don't even use it. It looks practically brand new. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and put this one in my makeup museum section, which is where I just keep all of the really nostalgic palettes. I remember how much I love this one. Looking at it now, I feel like it looks very boring, but this just had such a huge following back in the day. So, all right, I'm gonna put this just to the side. And this one here, if you guys have watched my eyeshadow palette collection videos, you know the story behind it. But if you're new to my channel, basically when I was first starting out, when I was blogging before I had this YouTube channel, um, I used to blog about drugstore makeup and 
and I really couldn't afford high-end makeup at all. And when I met my husband, who was my boyfriend at the time, one day we were at the mall together. We went into Sephora just to look around and he was like, is there anything in here that you want to review for your blog? And I was like, no, not really. I don't review this type of makeup because it's too expensive. And he was like, no, no, no. If there's something like that your readers would want to know about, like something really popular, you should review it. Like I'll buy it for you. So he ended up buying me this Vice palette, which had just came out. And I was so excited because I really never got to review high-end makeup and the fact that he was so supportive and willing to buy it for me was so sweet. So this is what the palette looked like. It's really dusty and messy, but I keep this one because of that story because I look back and think about how much he supported me since the very beginning. So that's why I hang on to this one, but I don't use it because it's super old. I want to say this is from maybe like 2006 or 5, so yeah. It's a really old one. It even came in its own pouch. And then we have a couple palettes from Persona. So um, first, I don't know why I kept this original identity palette. This was the old packaging. This is the new one. I think because initially when I got the new one, I was planning to just finish up the old one first or try to hit pan on it. And then I was gonna go just use the new one. But at this point, I mean, I have both of them. This one's just taking up space. So I think I'll declutter the old one now and just start using the new one. And this is honestly one of my favorite palettes of all time formula wise and just the colors are so easy to work with I used this one so much so I'm 100% keeping this one identity 2 while I love the formula I wasn't as into this color story I don't really wear jewel tones all that much and I just feel like I don't really wear these deeper colors on my lid very much and I felt like most of the shimmer shades in this palette with the exception of this one and this bright gold were just kind of too dark and smoky overall so I'm probably gonna go ahead and declutter this one like I said the formula is great the colors just really aren't up my alley and then last I have this color theory copper palette from persona and this one was just like a five pan they did a couple of these I think the other one they had was like in pink packaging and it was all matte I did, did declutter that a while ago this one I kept because I was still using it but I haven't touched this one in a really long time and I have so many of these warm tones in other palettes so I'm gonna go ahead and declutter this one as well all right guys so let's total everything up I have have 10 palettes over here that I'm going to be keeping and then 11 palettes that I'm going to be decluttering so I think I did a pretty good job on this drawer definitely made a lot of space okay moving on to drawer number two this one's actually going to have quite a bit of nostalgia for you guys I have some Mali Beauty palettes also the balm let's go ahead and start with this one from House Labs this is the love for sale palette I got this very recently on Amazon but it's since been discontinued because as we know Lady Gaga has moved her brand over to Sephora so everything Thing that was on Amazon is no longer and she's completely revamped everything as of now she doesn't have any eyeshadow palettes at Sephora but since I just got this one I am going to keep it I do like the formula I like the colors so I'll hang on to it for now um, I also have a palette from doll 10 this is their doll squad palette this is my favorite palette that they make it is so beautiful the pigmentation is insane and I actually have a shade named after me this one's called Jen right here but if you've tried doll 10's other eyeshadows and found them to be a little bit more dusty and the shimmer shades not super intense wait until you try this one like it is so beautiful the mattes are also like velvet they are just super pigmented this is a gorgeous formula highly recommend checking this one out I also have this little four pan palette from house labs as well this was also from the Amazon brand and I like the formula of this one too I really like these rosy mauvey tones so I think I'm gonna hang on to it just because I got it like a couple of months ago all right so now let's dive into some of the Mali Beauty palettes. I'm not sure if you can actually get any of these anymore. They're all super old. Mali is a brand that I don't really hear people talking about on YouTube anymore. I know she's still over at QVC, but once she left Ulta, I really stopped hearing anybody talk about it. But I do really like her products. There's some things that are fantastic. She just doesn't get enough hype. So this was the Mali Wood palette. And I'm definitely gonna declutter this one. I just wasn't crazy about the colors in here. She also had a holiday palette called Let It Snow. This one was kind of the same setup you had six smaller eyeshadows and then two larger ones and I think the whole idea behind the larger ones is just that these are the ones you might use more often so she just gives you a little bit more to work with and this was a cute
palette as well, but it is so old. I think I'm gonna go ahead and declutter this too. Her Muted Muse palette was one of my absolute favorites. This one had these beautiful cool tone shades right here. The shimmers are more on the satiny side. They weren't super shimmery. They were very smooth. And then over here, she gives you again, like the crease color that you would use the most often. She made a little bit larger and then also the ivory highlighting shade, but I'm probably gonna go ahead and put this one in the declutter too, just because I've had it for so many years and I really have not reached for it in a long time. Then I had a larger palette from Mally. This was one of my favorites actually. It was called Ageless Eyes and I really loved the colors in here. They were so pretty. They were just more muted, very neutral, but you did have a couple pops of color. I loved this lavender shade right here and Harbor was a beautiful kind of dusty bluish gray. But this is a palette that I really just don't reach for anymore. So this unfortunately is gonna go in the declutter pile as well. Oh, I also have a palette from It Cosmetics. This was their Naturally Pretty palette. I haven't heard anybody talk about this one in a really long time, but it used to be a favorite here on YouTube. So this was an all matte palette. And I remember the formula being really good, but I haven't touched this one in a while. I still think I'm gonna get rid of it. This palette also is incredibly old. I've probably had it more than five years now, so. I think it's time to let it go. All right, and then I think all the palettes I have left are from the Balm. I know they have discontinued a ton of their palettes, so most of these are no longer available. And I used to love their palettes, but for some reason, I have not reached for these in a long time. So I'm gonna look through them really quick. If there's anything that really jumps out to me, I'll keep it. But I think most of this is probably gonna get decluttered. So first we have the Nude Tude palette. This is one of the first ones that I ever got from them. I wasn't crazy about the pan size. It's really small, kind of hard to get a finger in there. I mean, you can do it, but it's a little bit difficult. This is just a very basic neutral palette. I feel like I have these colors so many times over, so I think I'll declutter this one. Next, there was Nude Dude. This was volume two, and this one had slightly cooler tones, especially like these rosy shades right here. It did have a couple of warmer kind of peachy gold shades, but again, I have so many colors just like this in a lot of other palettes. So I'm gonna put this one in the declutter as well. Nude Beach was volume three, and this one I think was really warm toned. Yeah, so this one kind of reminded me of like Naked Heat or Tartlet Toasted. It came out around that time when all of those really warm tone palettes were popular. And again, it's okay, but I don't feel like the formula alone is enough to get me to keep it because I have palettes with these colors from so many other brands. If this was like the most standout formula, I think I would keep it. But because I like it just as much as I like any other ones, even my ColourPop palettes, I feel like it just doesn't make sense to hold on to these. Next up we have the Alternative Rock palettes. So um, palette one, these were face palettes by the way, had these six eyeshadows up here and then three face colors down on the bottom. And I actually really like this palette. I'm looking at it now and these rosy tones are so pretty. This bronzer was like the perfect bronze shade. This blush was really beautiful. Um, I don't really remember this highlight. I don't think I really used it that much, but I might actually consider hanging on to this one because this is a really nice travel palette. Now that I'm looking at it, I love the eyeshadow colors. The face colors work for me as well, and it's really nice and small and compact. So I think I'll actually hang on to this one for now. This is Alternative Rock Volume 2, and this one was definitely more warm toned. The face colors were more warm toned, the eyeshadows as well. But again, it could be a very good travel palette, especially, I mean, the two of these together are not really gonna take up that much space. And then I have my warm tones and my cool tones. So I think I'll actually keep both of these for now. The Balm Appetit palette. I remember this one having kind of funny packaging. Yeah, it's spelled eat your heart out inside. So when you open it up, it had these cutouts to the shadows and then there are the shadows themselves. And they all had these funny names like Bruce Shetta, Tate R. Tots, Chris P. Bacon. So funny, but I think again, I have these colors in so many other palettes. And from what I remember, I wasn't crazy about the formula of this one. So I think it's time to let this one go. This one I think was a custom palette that I made with some of their eyeshadow singles. I don't even know if they do that anymore, but these were the colors that I had picked back then. All of the shimmer shades are very satiny. The few that I have in here, it's mostly mattes actually. I haven't reached for this one that much, so I'm gonna go ahead and declutter that. Moving on, we have the Balm and the Beautiful. I think this one actually is the newest palette that I've purchased from them. It's not that old. And now they have this packaging because they've done away with magnets. They want the palettes to be recyclable. They have these little flaps where you tuck them in. 
and this is what this one looks like. But again, it's nothing that's really like calling out to me like I need this. Thinking about it like Marie Kondo, this doesn't really bring me joy when I look at it, so I think this one's going in the declutter as well. The Meat Matte palettes, these were my absolute favorite palettes from the balm and it's funny because they're all matte palettes but I just loved these so much back in the day. The Meat Matte Nude I think was the first one and these colors are just beautiful. I really love these understated neutrals. They're kind of almost like earthy toned. They're just really pretty and this formula was so good. These still feel so creamy and really really buttery and nice. I remember these being super blendable. I don't know, I might keep these for now. I know I don't tend to reach for all matte palettes, but I'm often searching for a palette to grab when I use like a liquid eyeshadow because I just wanna put a matte shade down in my crease and then put the liquid shadow on top. So I'm gonna pull this out and actually keep it nearby so that when I use my liquid and cream eyeshadows, I have like a matte palette to choose from. And then Meet Matrimony was slightly warmer. I didn't really use like these four very often because they're really, really deep and smoky, but like this shade is such a perfect crease color and this one as well. So I might keep this one too. I really did enjoy these palettes a lot. And then last but not least, we have the What's the Tea palettes. So these were kind of interesting palettes too, as far as the concept. So first of all, they had all the little teacups here and it came with two eyeshadow primers, one that was more neutral and then a black primer. And when you put the shadows over the black primer, it completely changed the color of the shadow, which was so cool. It was a really interesting concept, but these primers are completely dried out now. So they're pretty useless. And then as far as the actual colors in the palette go, again, I don't feel like they're anything extraordinary. I did like this duochrome, but actually this kind of feels dried out too. Like it's hard to pick it up. So I think I'm gonna declutter this one. And I'm also gonna declutter this one as well, but I just wanna show you guys what it looked like. It had some pretty colors in it, but I just don't feel like it's so much different than other things that I have, so. All right, let's tally up how many things I've decluttered. Okay, so for this drawer, the final total is I'm decluttering 13 and I'm keeping seven. All right, moving on to some drugstore palettes. I have my NYX palettes in this drawer as well as some other random brands just kind of scattered around. So um, let's start out with this one. This is from Joa and it's the Chasing the Sun palette. So I believe this was like a limited edition summertime palette and I actually really loved the bronzers and the highlight in this palette as the face palette palette but then um, you have these five eyeshadows up here that I felt like were just a little bit too dark for me I don't usually wear smoky eyes very often so I wasn't crazy about the eyeshadow colors in here but I did really like the bronzers still I do have other bronzers like single bronzers that I really love in my collection so I think I'm gonna put this one in the declutter pile because I just really don't reach for it I also have some palettes from Carity Cosmetics which I haven't really heard anybody talk about in a really long time but they have a great formula I got these at CVS. I don't believe they're available at CVS anymore, so I think you can only get them on their website now, but this one, Come As You Are. If you grew up in the 90s, you know exactly where that's from, and this whole palette is very 90s inspired. You have shade names like What's Up, uh, Cool Beans, Psych, Deja Vu, Oh Snap, Seattle, so really, really fun names, and then the shades are actually very nicely pigmented as well. Some of these colors are just stunning, and I really enjoy Enjoy their formula too so I feel like this is a brand that really doesn't get enough attention and to be honest I don't give it enough attention myself so I think I'm gonna hang on to this palette and start using it again because I haven't used it in a while. Carity also has another palette called Nudes and Rudes and this one is a very neutral palette I feel like it's not too warm and orangey it's not too cool either it's just perfect, honestly. You have some beautiful tones like the olive green, you have some grays and silvers, and then you have some slightly warmer tones over here as well, some of these softer, pretty rosy tones and golds. I have no idea why I don't play with this more. I definitely need to take these palettes out and start using them. Another great one from Carity is their Nude Palette, and this one also has some cool tones, kind of this half of the palette right here, or not half, but like these two columns, and also like you have the gray up here, and then these two columns are very warm toned but again it's just like a very simple neutral palette and also if you're somebody who doesn't like really glittery eyeshadows I think you'll love Carity's shimmer formula because I just want to show you guys quick it's glowy enough to where it's not like a boring satin shade it still has that glow 
but it's smooth and it's not overly like there's no glitter there's no fallout I often get asked what eyeshadow brands have shimmers like this and I never think of Carity, but that's why I want to mention it now because I think they're really good and then this is the last Carity palette that I have this one was way more warm toned but this is such a pretty combo because it not only has the oranges and golds it also has this row of purple shades down here it reminds me a lot of one of the violet boss palettes it has a very similar color story and this is just an excellent fall palette as well so really really pretty I think I'm going to keep this one next up I have this palette from 3CE this is a Korean brand it's called plot twist and I like this one because it's really neutral the only thing I don't love about this is that most of the shimmer shades are toppers, but they are very pigmented toppers. Like they pick up really easily. They have nice pigmentation. So I might hang on to this one, even though it's a little more neutral. I feel like the tones, the undertones are a little different than others that I have. I also have this palette from Jason Wu, and I feel like he was totally trying to copy this brand because it looks very similar and the formula is very similar as well. And it had some really pretty duochrome shades in it, like this one right here. This is a really gorgeous topper. Um, so I think I'll hang on to this one for now. I didn't get it all that long ago, and I'm still picking it up to use every once in a while. This next palette's from a Korean brand called Clio. And this one, I can't remember if I got it on Yes Style or Amazon, but very similar to the 3CE palette. And I feel like a lot of Korean brand palettes, all of the shimmer shades are actually toppers. But I love the way the mattes blend in this one as well. They're so velvety. I think this one is good for just very, very subtle looks. I also have these two palettes from Etude House. This one is Play Color Eyes in Rosé Wine. This one is just Play Color Eyes. I'm not sure what the color is. It doesn't actually say. Um, so this one had some really pretty pink shades in it. I think I might declutter it though because it reminds me so much of the ColourPop Blush Crush palette and this one has a glitter which I never wear the glitter and I like ColourPop's formula a little bit better so I think I'm going to put this one in the declutter and let's take a look at this one real quick. I think this one yeah it was just more neutral shades. Yeah I mean these colors are pretty but I feel like I kind of have them in like the Jason Wu palette and in uh, this Clio palette. They're very very similar and I like the Clio formula a little bit better so I think I'm going to declutter this one and then this last one is also from Etude House this is trench coat showroom and this one had like some pretty olives in it and again it was very neutral overall but I wasn't super super happy with the formula I felt like it was okay but I generally don't reach for this palette I always forget I even have it so I think I'm going to put this one in the declutter as well oh I also have these little mini Joa palettes as well I think I have three of them all together so let me just dig these out yeah, so these are available at CVS and they're okay. I don't think they're my favorite formula in the world. I haven't really played with them that much, but I don't remember them standing out to me as being spectacular. But again, they do have some more subtle shimmer shades if you like that, if you like something that's a little more satin. I'll probably hang on to them because I do talk about drugstore makeup a lot and I talk about, you know, different comparisons between drugstore brands and mini palettes and, you know, I've done videos like that in the past, so I may need to refer to these again. I think if I didn't have a YouTube channel, I probably would declutter them because they're not my most favorite formula, but because I may need them for reference, I'm just going to hang on to them for now because they're still a current product. I have a couple of these Revlon quads. These are the newer ones that came out, I want to say last year sometime, or maybe early 2022. And these surprised me as being better than I would have expected, but again, I don't feel like they were amazing. Just touching the shimmer shades right now, though, that feels so soft. Like, look at this color. This is so pretty. Let me just swatch it. All right, so maybe I'm sleeping on these Revlon palettes. I honestly haven't gone back to them since I tried them the first time. Maybe it was like the matte shades that I wasn't crazy about. I mean, no, they feel very soft and smooth. I don't know. I'll have to give these a try again and see because I don't really remember what I thought of them. So I'm just going to stick these two over here. This one, by the way, is called Exquisite and this one is called Decadent. This Revlon palette I actually do like. This is Slight Flex. And these are baked eyeshadows. So I know they're not everybody's cup of tea. I've heard like negative and positive reviews on this, but I actually really like this one. I mean, you hardly have to touch it to pick up, like look at how much color is on this. It's an amazing formula. It's actually really good. Um, the only thing I will say though, is that this duochrome 
it's a little bit more of a topper, so it's not quite as intense, but what I like to do is spray it with a little setting spray, and it really comes alive, and you can layer it on top of like this shade right here. It looks so pretty. So I'm gonna keep this. This is kind of like a hidden gem right here. All right, and then last but not least, we have some NYX palettes. Uh, the first one is the Ultimate Utopia. This one is still available, and it's a huge palette. Like there's so much to play with in here. It's a little bit overwhelming, but I often use this palette for dupes on my channel. So I'm definitely gonna hang on to it. I think the formula is okay. It's not my favorite eyeshadow formula, but it's not bad either. I think it's actually pretty good when you compare it to the other drugstore brands like L'Oreal and Maybelline and CoverGirl. So I will hang on to this one for now. And these actually used to be my favorite NYX palettes, the Perfect Filter. I've hung on to them for so long because I just used to enjoy them so much. But the truth of the matter is I never reach for these anymore ever so there was this one called all of you it had these really pretty greens in it i just thought the formula on this was so good at the time but now like i don't know this green kind of looks a little bit crumbly this one is not even picking up oh my gosh these are i think just really dried out and really old i've had these since way before youtube and i've been on youtube for four years now these could be like seven eight years old at this point so i think it's definitely time to let them go um so there was all of you this one was rustic antique which kind of reminded me a little bit of modern renaissance this one was golden hour which was just like more neutrals and then there was this one which actually might still be available because i've seen this around um, this is the lid lingerie and this one was an all matte palette and again I thought it was awesome at the time but like I just have so many of these colors over and over again this was like in the days before ColourPop and before there were a lot of good affordable eyeshadow brands so I really don't see the need to hang on to this one all right so totals for this drawer I am keeping 14 palettes and I'm getting rid of eight palettes all right guys, so this drawer is definitely a mishmash of a bunch of different brands and I think as we go now, you're probably gonna see a lot that are not organized. For example, I stuck these little Profusion palettes in here, but I know I have some of my bigger Profusion palettes in other drawers. I was really just trying to stick things in like where they would fit. I know I see like an Essence palette in here as well, and I have my other Essence palettes in different drawers. So anyway, let's start, I guess, with Flower Beauty. I do have a couple of palettes from them in this drawer. So the first one is the ET palette. This is brand new. I just did a look with this in one of my recent videos. It was the one where I talked about not wanting to shop the Sephora VIB sale this year. So if you missed that one definitely check it out because the look that I made with this palette came out so good it has these beautiful duochromes in it this one extraterrestrial is my favorite and I wasn't as crazy about this palette before I used it but now I actually think it's really good and even though I hated the packaging of this at first and also the Charlie's Angels one one of you guys told me there's supposed to be a DVD case and now it totally makes sense because they're movie palettes it looks like the movie cover on the front then you have the spot like where you'd put the DVD and then on the back like all the information so anyway definitely keeping the ET palette because I love flowers formula also we have the Charlie's Angels palette this is kind of the same deal this one was way more warm tone but again like these shimmer shades are so beautiful like look at how pigmented they are it's one of the best warm tone palettes at the drugstore I think I think flower it's definitely more underrated speaking of flower jungle lights desert lights you guys know how much I love these palettes I'm definitely keeping these a thousand percent for those of you who haven't seen what this formula is like let me just swatch a couple shades because it's so incredible they're just like the smoothest butteriest shimmer shades ever they remind me of my sydney grace eyeshadows and even though these palettes are both all shimmer shades i still reach for these i just grab a matte from a different palette because they're that good i usually like my palettes to be kind of all together like mattes and shimmers in one but these i will make an exception for so those are staying i also see a few more from flower down here so i'm just gonna pick these up really quick these are their little quads these i was not as crazy about to be honest with you i don't know why but i didn't think the formula was quite as good in these and I just wasn't like crazy about the colors either they're okay but I just feel like I have these colors in other palettes so I think I'm going to declutter it this
This is the Black Iris, and this one is Gilded Lily. I also have these palettes from Flower Beauty, which are older. I've had these for a long time, and this one in particular, Sugar Rush, I really loved the colors in this one, but it reminds me a lot of a palette from Moira that I just got recently that I'm just in love with. It has a lot of these same colors, and this formula was definitely not my favorite, so I think I'm going to go ahead and declutter both of these. I just didn't feel like the formula was good. It's super powdery and just kind of blends away. All right, moving on. I have these little palettes from Profusion. These are the berry milk tea, matcha milk tea, and Thai milk tea. So I got these at Walmart and I actually did a look with this one in a video. I used that duochrome shade and it came out so pretty. I think the formula is great on these, so I'm definitely keeping them. Next up are these two palettes from Catrice. This was the Pro Lavender Breeze and Pro Peach Origin. They're the slim eyeshadow palettes. I was not impressed with this formula at all. I just felt like they were dry. They were hard to pick up. Some of the colors like barely showed up at all. They're just really um, kind of chalky. So I think I'm gonna declutter both of these. So that was Lavender Breeze. This is Peach Origin. I mean, they looked really pretty and I was excited for them, but definitely not their best formula. This one is from Essence. It's their Hello Berlin palette. I actually do really like this one. I think the formula is good, so I'm gonna keep it. I feel like Essence has one of the better eyeshadow formulas at the drugstore and they're really affordable. Next up, I have these palettes from Ulta's collection and I actually really like these. I think I was surprised when I tried them um, because the shadows are really smooth and nicely pigmented. So this one is Blushing Blooms and it's like kind of more of a cooler, rosy toned palette. And then Everyday Faves is just really neutral but these just have such a buttery soft feel and again this is another brand where if you like more satiny shimmer shades and things that don't have a lot of glitter in them these are very smooth and they just give that satin look and they're not going to enhance creepiness on your eyes so there's that one and then the last one is sunset skies which was a little bit more warm toned so i think i am going to keep all three of these because i do like the formula next up we have two palettes from koki cosmetics we have pure magic and arabian nights so I'm not really a big fan of Koki's palettes. Their formula is not my favorite. And also I just, I don't know, I wasn't really drawn to this color story. It's okay, but it seemed a little bit disjointed to me. I kind of like didn't really know where to start. So I'm gonna put this one in the declutter pile. And same thing with Arabian Nights. I felt the same way about this one. Some of these warm tones especially looked like too close, almost like they were repeats. These two blues looked like they were almost identical. I just, I don't know, just didn't really inspire me to create looks with it. Next up, we also have Koki's Artist Palettes. These are also not my favorite. I think the formula could be so much better. So I'm gonna go ahead and declutter these, but I'll just show them to you really quick. Um, we have Peachy Queen right here. These were just kind of dry, a little chalky and powdery. The shimmer shades didn't pick up that well. They're a little more on the sheer side, which is a shame because I love so many of Koki's products, but I wish that they would revamp their eyeshadow formula and do something a little bit different. Um, this one is Treasured. And then we have Utopia, which this one I actually never even touched. And this one was Goddess. And actually, oh, this one was a revamped formula. They did say that they improved things. And I think it was a bit of an improvement. But I just have these colors so many times over in other palettes. I don't think it's worth it to really hang on to this one. So I'm going to declutter this as well. Oh, I didn't even realize I had more of these flower palettes. So this was Suns Blazing and this one was Golden Natural. These are going in the declutter pile. Maybelline Nudes of New York. I actually do like this palette. I don't think the formula is terrible compared to some of the other ones at the drugstore. So I guess I'll hang on to this one for now. It's kind of like a drugstore version of Soft Glam. It's very similar to that. This one is the Natural Beauty palette from Pixie, and I kept this one because I felt like these colors were so pretty. It's actually a very cool tone neutral palette, but I don't remember if I liked the formula. I mean, it feels like really soft and buttery. The shimmer shades have a lot of shine to them, but they're not glittery. I don't know what the mattes were like. I mean, it seems pigmented, so I'll hang on to it and try it again. I don't think I used it that many times, so... I'll make sure to pull that out and see what I think. When it comes to CoverGirl palettes, I'm just gonna declutter these. They're honestly not my favorite formula. They really don't stick to my eyes very well. I feel like they're too powdery and they just kind of blend away. So this was the Chocoholic one they did that smelled like chocolate. Then they had a peach one that smelled like peach. 
This is just a nudes one. I don't think it's scented. And then we have some more Maybelline palettes. This was the City Mini palette that they did with Shayla. It was a collab. This one was one of my favorites as far as the City Mini, but I'm not a fan of their formula. So this one's going in clutter. Also, we have Maybelline's Lemonade Craze and Soda Pop. Do you guys remember these? I don't even know if they're still out there, but these were huge back in the day. Like I remember Tati doing looks with them. Again, I don't see myself using them. These are super old, but I might put these in the makeup museum. I feel like these are kind of nostalgic. Nostalgic. And then last but not least, I have a bunch of these palettes from Collab, and these actually had a really nice formula. I loved Collab's eyeshadows, but I don't hear anybody talking about them anymore. Last time I went on the Sally Beauty website, which is where they're sold, I didn't even see like most of these palettes. I want to say they only have like one left. I think they're all being discontinued. And I honestly don't use them and I haven't reached for them in years. I think they're just really old at this point. So I think I'm just gonna declutter all of them. But Collab is a brand that I'm honestly sad it didn't get more hype because the quality was very, very good. It just didn't really seem to click with influencers. So, all right, let's total up all of these palettes. All right, so for this one, I'm decluttering 26 palettes and I'm keeping 13. So I think I did a good job with this one. All right, guys, moving right along, we have another really big, heavy drawer here. It's filled with palettes. I have some Rimmel, some Wet n Wild, a couple other miscellaneous brands. So uh, let's start out with this Flower Beauty one. This is the Forbidden Fruit palette. I think this one is relatively new. I want to say I got it last year and I wasn't impressed with it, to be honest with you. I felt like the shadows were just, I don't know, they didn't pick up very well. This is definitely not the same formula as the Desert Lights Jungle Lights or the movie palettes. It's just, I don't know, it's like really dusty, kind of chalky. I wasn't a fan of this one, even though I think it's pretty. So I'm going to put this one in the declutter pile. I also got this palette from JCat very recently, and I actually do love this formula. This is a really nice one. And while I don't often wear blue eyeshadows, I feel like the rest of the palette is very neutral for the most part. You have these really pretty rosy tones. The silver is gorgeous as well. And I thought this had great pigmentation, so I think I'm gonna hang on to this one. The Physician's Formula Rose All Play palette. This is actually almost a spot on dupe for Huda Beauty's new nude palette. I remember doing comparisons between the two, but the formula of this it was not my favorite, so I'm going to declutter this for sure. In general, I don't really love Physicians Formula eyeshadows. Also, I have this L'Oreal palette called I Go Wild. I got this one on Look Fantastic. This was something that was released in Europe, but not in the United States. And I have to say for L'Oreal, this formula is actually really good. And I'm kind of sad they never brought this one to the US. This duochrome shade is so beautiful. And I felt like the matte shades are velvety, the shimmer shades are nice. So this is actually a cool palette and it's a nice fall color story. So I think I'm gonna keep this one for now. I haven't used it as much as I wanted to. So I'll probably take this out and try it some more. I also have this palette from Pop Beauty. This is their light show palette in Fire Fit. Not really a big fan of their formula either. It has two pressed glitters in it, but Aside from that, I just felt like the mattes are those type that kind of blend away to nothing. Not to mention that I have these colors a million times over in other palettes, so I'm just going to put this one in the declutter. Next up, I have these little mini palettes from Hard Candy. I just got these very recently, so I'm going to keep them. And I've seen a lot of like hit and miss reviews on these. I actually liked them. I thought they were pretty good, but other people have said they didn't like them. I don't know if it was just the certain ones that they got. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and just keep these for now. And then I also have this Physicians Formula palette. This one I actually did like. Um, this is new. It's the Butter Believe It eyeshadow. And this is actually very similar to Natasha Denona's Mini Star palette. I actually swatched it next to this and it was so close and this formula is actually beautiful. The shimmer shades are really pigmented, really smooth. I think I'm going to keep this one since I just got it recently. All right, moving on. Let's talk about Rimmel. I have a ton of these Magnifies palettes and I used to love these. I used to think these were one of the best at the drugstore, but the last time I picked up one, I think it was this one, which is one of my favorites, the Rocks Edition. I just love these colors. I wore it and I just felt like it faded so fast. And again, I think this is one of those situations where I bought these back when drugstore eyeshadows from the major brands were pretty terrible. And this was kind of like the best that there was at the time but now I have Colourpop, I have Moira, Essence has a really great formula, there's e.l.f. so I just think there's a lot more brands at affordable prices now and in comparison this just didn't seem as good as I remembered it. That being said I do still love this color story. I'm willing to kind of make it work but I want to thin out the rest of these. 
these magnifies palettes because I just really don't reach for them. So for example, the rainbow edition, I never use this one. The thunderstorm edition was a really cool tone palette and I loved the colors in here, but this had one of the worst formulas out of all these palettes. So I think I'm gonna declutter that one. This was the color edition, just not my favorite in general. I just, I don't know, it didn't inspire me. The spice edition, I think this one had one of the best formulas out of all of these, but these are colors that I have in so many other palettes, so I think I'll probably get rid of this one as well. Then the nude edition and this one, which I think was the very first one. It has kind of different packaging. This was called London Nudes Calling. I have these shades in a million palettes. They're just very basic. This one's the wow edition. Didn't really wow me, so. So it's going over there. The Crimson Edition is actually a dupe for the Naked Cherry palette, but obviously I don't even wear that one that much, so I definitely won't be reaching for this. Magnifies Reloaded. I mean, this is just warm tones with a pop of blue. Groundbreaking. And then we have the Electric Violet Edition, which I actually really loved. Again, the colors in here, but the formula was not good. And I think it's because purples can be just so hard to formulate. I noticed that in a lot of palettes, even high ends. So I'm going to declutter this one too. So really the only one I'm keeping is Jewel Rocks. And it's just because I think this is a really unique color story. And I like this combination. So... I'll hang on to that one. All right, and then I think we're just left with Wet n Wild. So I have their newer palettes over here. I have the Color Icon palettes here. These I love, the new palettes, not so much. And I keep feeling like I should hang on to these new palettes because so many people love them. I didn't really have an issue with the shimmer shades. For me, it was the mattes. I felt like they just didn't grip to my skin. I felt like they were so powdery. So I don't know if I just need to use these with different primers. I kept meaning to do that and I keep forgetting. So I'm going to keep them for a little bit longer. I'll see if I can make them work. And if not, then I'll declutter them at that point. So let me just quickly show you the ones that I have. I have Go Commando, which is this one. One. This one's Walking on Eggshells, and then we have Petalette. This one is Camo Flaunt, and this is My Lucky Charm. Oh, and I forgot one. This one is Sundays. And then for the larger ones, we have Nude Awakening, and this one is Heart and Soul. And then we have Lights Off, and then Call Me Sunshine. This one actually looks a lot like Naked Honey. And then you might have noticed that I have the original Comfort Zone palette. I haven't been able to let this one go, I think because I just feel like Wet n Wild had the best formula when they made this one. I know they redid Comfort Zone and added some crease colors, which I definitely appreciated, but I still like this formula a little better than this one. So I think I'm gonna actually retire this to the makeup museum because I'm not actually using it. It's so super old, but I just wanna hang on to it. So I'm gonna put this over here and then let's quickly just go through these. So we have the Comfort Zone. I'm gonna keep this one. Next is Cosmic Collision. I actually love this color story a lot and this purple shade is one of my favorites for the lid. My Glamour Squad is totally a dupe for soft glam and I actually featured these in a video a long time ago now. It was a couple years ago and I compared these to some high-end palettes and really they did dupe quite a lot of palettes. I swatched this next to soft glam and it was like almost identical. This one, Rosé in the Air, is a modern renaissance dupe and again almost the same. Stop Playing It Safe I think was a Natasha Denona dupe. I'm trying to think of the name of the palette that this was duping and I, it's escaping me now but it was really similar as well the boo crew was a halloween launch i don't believe this one is around anymore it could be but i really didn't reach for this that much it's a lot of blue which i don't normally wear so i think i'm going to declutter this one vi purple looked really similar to natasha denona's lila palette is it lila or lila i've heard it both ways but yeah, this one, again, was very similar to that. Coffin Break was another limited edition Halloween palette, and I don't know, I never really used this one that much, so I think I'm gonna get rid of this one. In the Smoke, this one was another Halloween. I really didn't enjoy this color story at all. I hardly reached for this one. Not a Basic Peach, I think this one was like a Kylie summer palette dupe or something. I like this one, so I guess I'll hang on to it. And then the last one was Nude Awakening. This is another really good one if you like more cool tone neutrals. So I'm going to keep this one as well. And then last but not least, we have this 32 pan eyeshadow palette. This is also the color icon formula that I really like. I really have not reached for this one that much. And I think between all of these smaller ones, I probably have all these colors. So I don't know if I really need them like all together in one palette. So I think I'm probably going to declutter this as well. 
Okay, so final tally for this one, I'm getting rid of 18 palettes and keeping 26. It sounds like a lot, but they're all really small. So <laughs> I think they'll fit a lot better in this drawer once I put them back. All right, guys, so I think I'm gonna go ahead and stop here. I made pretty good headway. I finished these two drawers here and then these three. So I still have these three more to go and then that whole other section, but I feel really good about how empty these are and I can go ahead and start putting some of this stuff on top into those drawers. So stay tuned for part five. If you're not subscribed to my channel, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button before you go so that you won't miss the notification for the next part in the series. Thank you guys so much and I'll see you all in my next video. Take care guys. Bye.